So I don't know if this is recording, but anyways, um, I've picked out all the stems um, that I could see, and now I am crushing the blueberries in preparation for making jam. Uh, so I'm just taking this masher and mashing. It's nice to have a <coughs> excuse me, a shallow flat dish to be doing your crushing. in a while I'll come across a stem. And when I do cook jellies, jams too, um, it's nice because the skins um, are broken down as well too, so you don't get as many skins in there. I don't know how much this is. I need about four and a half cups. So it's interesting, I bought this uh, liquid uh, pectin yesterday from Bernardin and I bought three packages and in not one of the packages was there actually um, a recipe, like the, the um, amounts. Then I went on their website and they honestly did not even have a blueberry jam recipe. They had freezer blueberry but not your... So I went to Pinterest and I got it out there. So I'm hopefully, now the, the recipe that I used asked for a box of pectin and I just used one of these liquid pectins and that may have been why the jam didn't set. So I'm going to try to things of pectin. Let's see how much I have here. Not quite. It's at just under four cups. And I want to have four and a half. So a little bit more. So here I will. Again, I've got to take out the stems that I can see. And I think the rest of them I am going to freeze in our downstairs freezer. And uh, then I'll be done the blueberries for this year. There's a better technique, but yeah, I get them and then I kind of squish them and turn them or rotate them and press them down as I'm going around. Okay. 
So to get a little bit of jam, it doesn't take a lot of fruit. It takes a lot of sugar though. Okay, so that's enough um, blueberries. So now I'll get my pot. Okay. So in the pot go the blueberries. And the pectin. So I'm going to use two of them this time. So that's four and a half cups of berries crushed. Two packages of the li liquid pectin. I have a third cup of lemon juice. Okay. I am in this bunch. Do a little bit of cinnamon in it. Yeah. Okay. Um, teeny bit of salt as well. Now that's just the salt just adds flavor. So I'm gonna try that. So would it <clears throat> pectin lemon juice whatever. Yeah. so now I'm going to put it on the stove and over here I'm going to put it on medium high heat and we're going to bring that to a boil and when that comes to a boil then I will add sugar so there's six and a half cups of sugar in this recipe which is takes almost the two kilograms of sugar Sugar. I've got to keep an eye on it on this pot because it it uh, burns very easily. It's a very thin bottom pot, but it's a it's my big pot. Gotta keep hydrated with coffee. <laughs>
I'm just going to use these trays to put the blueberries on for, for the freezer downstairs. I cannot walk away from the stove because you don't want to you don't want to uh, you don't want to burn anything and I have a tendency to do that a little bit for a bit. Um, they say when you have a, a boil that you can't um, you can't stir down that's when I can add the sugar and like a tray full. One more. And then we have a little bit on hand for fresh. It is a, when you're trying to preserve and do all this stuff for winter, it's a little bit tedious work, but the rewards are in February, you're getting fresh blueberries. So, and yes, you can go to the store and buy the, I mean, we supplement by the time blueberry season is, if I only have it till, you know, March or April, obviously we need to have some berries before then. So yes, then I do buy some, but it's nice to have it on hand that you already have it. So this is kind of what it looks like now, right in here. Okay, so we're so you can see that I stirred it, and it's not boiling yet. Again, so in short order, it will boil again, and then I'll stir it down again. So this also is um, an induction stove, so um, all the pots have to be steel on the bottom, have steel in them. <coughs> the aluminum Teflon ones don't work. Um, I had a set of dishes or pots that were that ones, so I they're gone to the camping bin. 
Um, but anyways, uh, so this, that's why this pot is kind of old, but it's working. And uh, then I just got a couple other pots as well that will work. So you can see it's just slowly simmering. But I have my sugar ready for when the time comes. So boil, 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 toil and trouble. <clears throat> so you can see that <clears throat> there is some foam happening so what you can do is you can put a little bit of Bit of butter in it. And that's supposed to reduce the foaming. I don't know what happens when it's already foamed, but there wasn't too much yesterday. So now it's coming to a boil a lot quicker between <coughs> stirring. So that means it's coming up to temperature um, that you want before you add the sugar. And you know when you're you're making jam and they say use a big pot like just do one <clears throat> thing at a time I used to make double batches but I didn't, have, I didn't have a big enough pot to really do it properly <clears throat> and then once I added the sugar it really boiled and then it kind of boils or you really have to stir it down and then you're praying that it doesn't um, overflow your pot. So now I kind of do it one batch at a time. It's uh, because otherwise you run into trouble. Okay, so you can see that when I'm stirring it now, it's kind of still boiling. Okay, so now I'm going to add the sugar. I'm going to put you down while I do that.
So here you can see that putting the sugar in, it's still in big kind of clumps here, so you just keep stirring it in, stirring it in, it'll break apart. Ooh, it's getting quite steamy. So almost all of it is broken up. So I'm going to continually stir it and oops, sorry, bouncing all over the place here because it will come to temperature a lot faster and I don't want it to burn on the bottom so keep stirring <clears throat> until we get that bubbling that boiling without it going away. And then what you do is that boiling is going to boil hard. You got to have it boiling hard. And then when it does that, you do that for one minute. That's the time that you pray that it doesn't boil over your pot. So as you can see the pot behind me, um, that's where I've sterilized um, the lids for the the jars and then over there are the jars that are, are ready to go over here they're the ones ready to go they just came out of the dishwasher so they are sterilized I should have put a cloth probably over it and they will Now I do not, with my jam, I do not do a water bath canning. What I do is I put, I use paraffin wax and I melt that. I have a little pot. I'll show you. So. I have no idea where I got this from, but it you can put, so I've put wax in it, and I keep using it just for that. So it's got wax in it, and I put it in a double boiler, and then it will melt the wax, the peril wax, and it's got the nice little spout, so then I can pour it nicely onto the, the jam. And basically you're providing a seal instead of it being like an air seal this is a wax seal and quite I mean I've hardly ever had unless the wax did not go to the outsides and I'll, I'll show you that um, when we are ready to do that part but usually I let it sit for about 24 hours so those ones get loved last night I can probably put the wax on um, soon and then you just have to make sure that the wax actually touches all the sides so that no air can get underneath so then of course no um, bacteria can get underneath and spoil so I can put them into my cold storage or my pantry um, rather than the freezer or the fridge or anything like that so you can see that it's not boiling yet so the sugar will make it have to get up to a higher boil temperature and you can see it's not quite getting there yet and don't be tempted to um, <clears throat> put the heat uh, put the temperature up higher because again you do not want to burn it so 
so I just keep stirring it. So blueberries are, uh, I mean you can mix it with anything like plums or peaches are already now too. There's, you can do peach and blueberry jam together. Um, yeah, plum and blueberry. Uh, we have these wonder berries growing. Haven't picked them yet. I've never had them. And apparently you can only use them cooked because then, then they taste okay. Otherwise they're pretty bitter. So I think you have to put sugar. I'm going to try to make with those because they're not going to be there that, that many. Maybe a little jam, maybe a little cordial or something like a drink because apparently it's very very high just like blueberries. Oh, we're recording again. Okay. So I'm waiting for my boil after the sugar has been added to the pot of blueberries. So again to summarize, I've had crushed blueberries four and a half cups, added a third a cup of lemon juice, a little bit of cinnamon, a little bit of salt, and two packages of liquid pectin. And the recipe I got says, or you can do one package of the dried powdered pectin. So one package of the liquid pectin did not set it fully um, in the batch I did last night. <clears throat> so um, yeah, I put in two this time. So hopefully we'll get a nice set blueberry jam this time. Uh, so with the sugar in it's going to take a little bit longer to bring it to boil because sugar has a high, higher boil uh, temperature. So we're just waiting for that. So while that's happening, I'm going to go over here and put my other blueberries into a smaller container. We can eat fresh from it. Now it's going to be up to everybody else that uses the blueberries to get the... So I just have a little bit left and that we can eat fresh. Okay, so... Looky, looky here, it is starting to boil. Okay. So it's not a hard boil now yet. As you can see, it's kind of boiling while I'm stirring, but not overly hard. That will come very quickly. Still kind of a medium boil, I'd say.
keep going. So it's not quite up to a hard boil yet. Almost. Yeah, there's cinnamon in, I put cinnamon in the blueberry jam that I'm making. And Okay, we're getting there. We're getting to the hard boil. It's kind of tedious, stirring and stirring and stirring. But You're a hard boiled person? Yeah. And I don't think letting it boil too long is going to hurt anything because it just cooks longer. We should make it thicker, hopefully. So see, adding that butter took a lot of the foam away, and don't ask me why it does that, but probably the oil's in it. Okay, I'd say that's a hard boil now. I'm going to turn on the timer for one minute, and keep it going for a minute. Okay, that's one minute. Turn off the timer, turn off the stove. And I keep stirring it for a little bit to uh, cool it down. So there's literally no foam, which is good. So I don't have to be scooping the foam off, but if you can, I just put it in a little bowl. And you, you can skim it off with a uh, stainless steel spoon. And just put it in a little bowl. You can have it on your toast in the afternoon or whatever. Um, doing fresh. You can eat the foam. It's just foam of blueberry foam. Okay, so I'm just going to let that cool down for a bit and then I'll show you how I um, bottle it. Okay, back to the <coughs> blueberry jam and I'm just going to put it in bottles now. So, generally, generally, whatever, Usually, what I do is scoop it, and I have a nice little uh, 
funnel that fits perfectly on small mouth canning jars. So I'm going to make sure it gets over the shoulder into the top because when I put that layer of paraffin wax on um, I want to have it up to the top and so the wax doesn't go under the shoulder of the the jar because then it's hard to get the wax off when you need it. Okay, so I'm going to put you down, get this finished, and then we will, when I do the waxing, I will show you. So as you can see, I put all the jam in the jars, so we got three quart ones, I don't know, it's a pint, pints I think, well, are these pints, anyways. And two little ones, two <laughs> medium-sized ones. Anyways, um, <clears throat> and now I'm just going to put the uh, put the lids on. That's kind of hard to do with. So what I do then is I cover it up like I did those ones and basically I was told that to do that you're kind of letting them cool down slower. I also got a little bit of, of jam for us to have in uh, fresh or I could put it in the freezer because freezer jam you don't have to um, you don't have to sterilize your jars and all that kind of stuff so it's it's a little bit more forgiving that way because you're freezing it so there's no chance of the uh, <clears throat> bacteria getting in when it's frozen so um, I'm gonna leave these for about 24 hours and then it's lunchtime now so after lunch I will put the wax on here so you can see how I do that. So, now, last step. Hi, it's Trisha here from East Marsh Acres. Um, I'm finally getting back to this, just this is a day or so later. As these gems are curing, um, these are the blueberry gems that I did here. This is the first batch and you can see it's a little bit runny but I think that's good for putting on yogurt and so on. Um, then this batch here um, that I did, and I put two things of the liquid pectin. Seems to have done it to um, have it um, That one has, so some of these jars says put them on half seal, but I'm not going to count on that that seal is perfect because um, it was not water bath cans, so I can't be certain that it's a good seal. So right here, what I'm doing right now is I am, this is my little own thing. 
So in there is wax melting. So the wax, oh, I've got you a little steamed up. Sorry about that. Um, the wax is going to, uh, I'm going to put it on the tops of each of these ones here. So now if you're wondering about, oh, I'm, I'm really messy dressed up right now, but um, I don't know if any of you are know that I am an artist. So I've been working on some art, fixing up some art for some shows that I have coming up um, in September. So uh, yeah, I'm in my artist clothes, which is good for this too, because then I don't, it doesn't matter if I get them dirty or not. So uh, we're just gonna wait for this wax to, to uh, melt up. And I'll show you, we just went into, yesterday we went into the uh, greenhouse and we picked again. So we've got a whole bunch of tomatoes to process and cucumbers again too. So but these are kind of interesting tomatoes. They kind of start off purple and green and now they kind of go to purple and orange, whatever. So they're kind of a grape tomato, Roma, slush, and, uh, but they're very tasty. So we're kind of using them to uh, eat with our lunches. And, uh, and then these ones, these Paul Robesons, again, I'm going to uh, make into some sauce. So uh, yeah, very good harvest for, well, I guess we harvested on Saturday. And now that was Thursday. So let's see, wax isn't quite melted yet, almost there. So I'll let you see how I do that in a second. going to put the wax on the top and then I want to make sure that it hits all the sides so we get a seal on there. Just have to do it a, about an eighth of an inch or a few millimeters. No. And I'll even go on the runny stuff as well too, because um, it's the consistency is. Okay, so it looks like I've got enough wax. Let's put that back. Looks like it dripped a little bit, but that's just wax, and it will. So as you can see, the uh, the wax is hardening, and when that hardens up, then I can put it away into the cold storage where I keep our jam. So, anyways, that's a little quick finish to our my jam making process. Um, I think it was successful, and uh, yeah, there we go. Okay, thanks for being with me just in this little bit of the afternoon, and we'll talk to you soon. Take care.